friends, uh, in last few hours we have discussed about the internal structure and composition of the earth, how this composition and structure are responsible for earthquake and volcanoes. We have discussed about the earthquake and their causes, their effects, etc. And how to mitigate is also our concern. And under that we have discussed what are the seismic proof design and buildings. Now another effect of earthquake is a tsunami. We shall understand what is tsunami, how this is affected and what are the consequences how best we can take the precaution against tsunamis. If earthquake takes place under water, below the sea, below the lake, below the reservoir, we call it tsunami. What do you mean by tsunami? Tsunami is nothing but if earthquake takes place under water, a higher height higher energy waves are generated. We know the largest water body is a sea. In the sea there are waves, wind blows over the surface of the sea and pushes the water body and waves are generated. As these waves travel towards the land, they grow in height because of the wind force we call patch that is surface of the water and wind together. They travel over the surface of the water and reach the land and according to the conservation of energy principle, as these waves travel toward the land, their wavelength decreases. As the wavelength decreases, the wave height increases according to the principle of conservation of energy. As the wave height increases, the amplitude increases, their speed also increases. This is under normal case. Example, if initially a wave height of say 1 meter is generated, by the time it reaches the land, its height may be 2.5 meter. Initially 1 meter, by the time it reaches the land, it may be 2.5 meter. Initially suppose we have 2 meter height, by the time it reaches the land, its height, height of the wave may be 4.5, 5 meter like that. During any earthquake or any other kind of disturbances such as volcanic eruption in addition to earthquake, other underwater explosion for so many uh, tests also nuclear tests also we do. If a land slides along the coast or underwater, glacier sudden a huge ice block, ice chunks fall into water. We do have meteoritic impacts and other such disturbances below sea water, they generate a higher waves. When these higher waves initially say 2 meter, 2.5 meter, etc., when they travel toward the land, their height increases nearly two and a half times or three times more and a higher energy waves because wavelength decreased their speed is also high a higher energy higher speed of waves reaches the land this we call tsunami now this is in general as the waves propagate towards the land, they experience a 
bottom topography decreases and decreases and decreases, they may at some point experience the friction between the bottom topography, bottom contour. If that also happens, the waves deviate from their normal direction and when they deviate from their normal direction like this, we call wave refraction. Example, this is the coast. If these are the waves coming, if they change their direction like this, they change their direction like this they change their direction like this. As a result, initially their spacing, now you see, the waves may converge. When waves converge, there is a piling of waves, their wave energy become extraordinarily high several times. This may be a local phenomena. The earlier what I have said, higher waves reaches the coast, it can happen over a larger length of the coast, but this can happen locally also. As a result, we have a higher energy waves reaches the coast and this we call tsunami. Yes, this is an example. So, we have earthquake explosion because of uh, the sea crust or the crust in general, if we have failure, breaking due to subduction or subsidence or sudden faulting, earthquake waves are generated, a higher waves than the normal generate, they travel toward the surface and a higher wave energy hits the coast. This we call tsunami. The now, it is possible to predict or record early and inform the concerned we call it tsunami warning system. What is that? We have a very sensitive sensors which continuously monitor the pressure of the waves and this records example here and if the moment we have some kind of disturbances, it records immediately it transmits over to the ground. This process is called tsunami warning system, a sensitive device placed at a deep sea, possibly at several places, especially in along or in the area of sensitive area we call vulnerability, where likely to happen. In such area we can mount this system and they continuously record if there is any change in the pressure of the waves and immediately they send it to the, they continuously send that if there is any change in deviation that is an important note for us that is recorded. So, that information we can send it through satellite to the land, we call tsunami warning system, warning center. From there, the government agencies can give warning to the fishermen, to the population on the coast and administration, whatever the precaution is needed. We have this tsunami warning system. Example, Pacific Ocean. It's a sensitive area. The several countries together, we have a consortium, say Australia, India, and other countries surrounding. We have a joint venture because one point may not be adequate. I have several such centers and we share information. Not that the information I get is only useful to me. Sometimes, it may affect the other coast, Indonesia coast it may affect or Japan it may affect. Therefore, 
we have a consortium we share if my sensor is not able to detect by some reason the other sensor may record and that can be shared this consortium and tsunami warning system help us to manage and minimize the damage yes no before i go yes we have the tsunami can we prevent obviously no we cannot prevent but what best we can take is the precaution tsunami warning system is one of the best way to communicate and take precaution now along the sea coast commonly it happens severe damages happen what best we can do now as per crz coastal regulation zone notification it is in the interest of the public that from high tide water level up to 500 meter if this is the coast of if this is the high tide line high when waves reach highest high tide we have a low tide we have a high tide during for example this is a cross section of the ground during low tide sea level is here during a high tide sea level is here from high tide level 500 meter till construction activity permanent structures are banned as per this it means we cannot construct a resort a building like that a permanent structure if we construct likely to get a damage of course there are some concessions depending on the cases for example harbor very close to that we have to operate we are loading and unloading fishery boats etc have to operate it is not always possible but depends on the nature of the activities again if we have a beach in front of this a wide beach when the tsunami waves come this water percolate through sandy bed once water percolates its energy is lost it is a dissipated energy is regulated reduced that cause lesser damage if we have a wide sandy beach that is a must chennai you go you have wide sandy beach and then well behind it they have constructed a sea wall then we have the permanent structure it is necessary for protection so this is one another one is there are mangrove forest this also important for defense system against the cyclone as well i repeat it there i do not discuss it again here what are the coastal defense structures system against a tsunami and cyclones i will discuss it there okay with this we will conclude this friends another aspect of earthquake is the landslide this also another effect what is the landslide how it occurs and what are the other additional factors that cause landslides in addition to earthquake and what are the possible preventive measures we shall try to understand now landslide is nothing but a mass of the earth material may be rocks may be soil moves along a definite plane or surface this failure is termed as the landslide this failure is a term as the landslide you have heard 
many several landslides. I was part of the investigating team of Karwar landslide that occurred in October 2009. I am sharing some information there. This is a photograph of the landslide. I just gave a picture of this landslide before going into the details just to create an enthusiasm, awareness, seriousness about the landslide. Near Karwad, there is a village called Kadwad. Landslide occurred 4 o'clock 03 minute. Occurred and entire hill mass slided down and it horizontally moved by 250 meter in just 3 minutes. Imagine 250 meter in 3 minutes an old man was running to escape. He was feeling the hill was chasing him. Imagine 250 meter in 3 minutes a hill slides and horizontally moves. How this is possible? We will explain it a little later. Large block known as a slump block moves during the landslide. All along the roadside between a Karwar and Ankol there in a 21 sites, all they were in a one line along the highway. Huge blocks of rocks slided on the road, into the road. The scar above a landslide is easily visible where this happened earlier in the past if have happened. That scar is visible. They can occur along a slope where the internal resistance of the rocks are reduced. Rocks have shearing stress. If that internal resistance force is reduced, there are several reasons for this. If that is reduced or they lose their holding capacity, we do have landslide. Common to many earthquakes, many earthquakes happens after removal of a part of the slope due to construction, particularly for construction of a road. Especially in earthquake sensitive area we call no Himalayan Ridge, North India, along the Western Ghats, even the South Kendra or Annamala Hills, that range, we read Kerala, even Karwar, etc. We have a steep slope. Along this, for particularly for road construction, we have excavated. After excavation, if we have not done the slope treatment or unscientific excavation, etc. or sometimes loose weathered soil, we leave it like weathered rocks, jointed rocks. For road work, we excavate and leave it. In all these cases, landslides are common. Yes, this is a simple picture. This is Specifically to Kadwa, all along the hill slope they have the houses. They have constructed. Maybe it is uh, convenient in many respect, and they thought this is uh, a hard area, hard rock area, stable, etc. And due to earthquake, it is slided, all washed away, and buried under the soil cover. As many as 85 houses lost, 19 people died in Karwar earthquake. It all happened in just 2 to 3 minutes. There was absolutely no time to escape. 
Therefore, earthquake induces the landslide. Landslide causes a severe damage and what are the possible way and what are the types of landslide, what are the consequences, preventive measures, we shall try to understand a little more detail. As we said, all movement of land masses are referred as a landslide but differ in many respects depending on the nature of the material, nature of the slide. Therefore, all types of landslides are categorized earth movement. Sudden movement of the earth material along a definite zone under the influence of gravity, we call them landslide or mass movement, earth material movement, etc. <coughs> Sorry. Now, depending on the nature of this, we can classify into earth flow, landslides, subsidence. Earth flow is a creep and a rapid flow. Creep is a slow movement of the earth material along a definite zone continuously. We have seen some fences, posts, pillars, etc. constructed for something get tilted along the hill slope because of a continuous movement of the earth material pressure that fence or pole may lean because of the soil creep. Rapid flows also happen. Huge mass of soil suddenly slide along a plain. We have seen along the roadside or many. So, these are only the loose earth material soil movement. Often the rock debris also involved. If it is the blocks of rocks, they slide, they may also slump. Example, Gokak waterfall site, if you go huge blocks of rocks, from hill top to the roadside that have slided, slided, slided and came on the road and they have removed. This may not be in a fraction of a second. It must have happened in pulses, one day from here to here, another day from here to here, another day from here to here. See, if this is the hill slope, this is the road, that block, one day must have the came and sat here, another day they must have came, came and sat here, one more day like this. In a series of pulses, they must have reached and this is called slump. Of course, the damage that occurs is relatively less as compared to the rock slides or a rock fall. I give a beautiful example of this. The rock slide is another. It is relatively faster, sudden slip. Rock fall is along the cliff on steep roadside. So, during earthquake, this all happens. This is due to smaller vibration, even passage of a train is enough to cause vibration and such kind of a disturbance. Whereas, these are due to a higher magnitude of earthquake, rock before going to this, I quote one more example. Konkan Railway we have heard. Before leaving the Goa to Ratnagiri, that train, they run an engine just to check the, the track is free in heavy rain falling. Rainy days, it is so heavy rain that often the track is blocked. 
and they first run the engine exactly year I have forgotten some 10, 15 years or more. First they ran an engine, engine left the Goa and reached the Ratnagiri and they gave a yes, green signal, the track is free, you can run. After that half an hour, that warning, the train left the Panjim station to the next. In between what happened, we don't know. The train in between hit a huge block on the track and 55 people died. What happened? When the engine passed, crossed that, it, the track was free. Before actual passenger train passed, in between a huge block of rock came and fell on the track. And this train hit that and 55 people died. So, this kind of rock slide, it takes only few minutes all along the hill slope to travel. Not necessarily few seconds, few minutes is enough. In between it must have happened. So they cause severe damage and this can be triggered by other natural process. A passage of train creates a vibration. In addition to that, there are other factors like heavy rainfall which can lubricate the contact, facilitate sliding. That can also add thus severe damage occurs due to landslides. There are subsidence and collapse due to plastic flow and collapse. Plastic flow, suppose we have underwater, underground, this is a ground, below that, below that we may till here to here, if this is the ground, I am giving the section up to here, we may have a hard soil cover. Along Batkal, Kundapur, Bindur, you find on the roadside, we have a soil called lithomarge, rich in clay. If this is saturated, this clay become plastic like and flow, escape. Then the subsidence take place, collapse is another. If we have removed a lot of underwater material, example, kolar, we for mining take out so many earth materials. Inside become hollow. If inside become hollow, due to some disturbances on the ground, there can be collapse. Therefore, proper mine, mining activities, precaution is needed. Generally, it happens in a coal mine. When we mine coal below the groundwater level, under or below the groundwater, it is everything is so saturated. When you mine this was a coal, you mine this and if this is the water table and because of pressure when you mine all these, they rush into. When a huge quantity of water rush in, there is collapse. So this kind of collapse, especially underground, especially in a deep mines, causes subsidence and landslide. Is also another way. Yes, several man made activities add to the landslides. So, the, the same thing just now I have explained. Rapid flow is similar to the creep but differ in terms of speed and depth. Huge depth of material is also involved. Creep is involved up to shallow depth, say 1 or 2 meter. Whereas the rapid flow is in not a greater depth, several, even 5 meter, 10 meter, we have the records more than that. Especially along the Western Ghat Hill ranges, 
subsidies due to plastic outflow, it may occur when a plastic layer like a clay bed, just now I have ex explained, is squeezed outward. Along the Kundapur, Bhatkal roadside, we have a lat right below. We have a lithomarge clay we call highly rich. And when they get saturated, they are squeezed out due to overlying heavy load. Subsidence is due to collapse. It occurs due to extensive pull out of a large volume of underground water. Just now I have said especially in the coal mine or due to removal of earth material. Yes. What are the modes of landslide? I am trying to present them in a picture like this is a flow type, this is a topples, rock boulders what we have in Gokak like, just now I have mentioned that one, slump the materials can be removed. This is another slide rocks along the loose blocks, jointed blocks, slide along the slope. This is a creep, just now I have said the post or fences or this get tilted due to continuous movement. This is a fall especially along the hill slide, especially along the coastal side. Vasco uh, near that uh, port also we see huge blocks like that. Even Butkal we have seen huge blocks because of the waves. They cut here, they cut here, they cut here. And one day unsupported mass can collapse. This will locally generate a higher waves also. Complementary higher waves, they cause more erosion and erosion material, unsupported material, supported part, the huge blocks may slide, they go hand in hand, complementary to each other. Therefore, the effects of all these are dependent on the site, nature of the material and other related activities. Yes. Causes of earthquake. We have mentioned earthquake is one of the major causes for the landslides. We have said in addition to that what are the other causes for the landslide. We call internal causes. External cause is an earthquake. Internal cause influence of a slope of angle. What is that? Example, example, this is the slope depending on the nature of the material, some materials are stable even at this gradient, this angle. Some materials are even stable, even under this gradient, steeper gradient. These are all due to inherent character of the material. Example we have seen, I can pile up rice. I pour a bag of rice on the ground, it forms a cone like but gentle cone. If I pour a sand with little dampness on a rock, it form a steeper cone. It depends on the nature of the material. That is, each material has some cohesive force. That cohesive force determines and that critical angle for each material we call angle of rest, angle of repose. Beyond certain degree, the materials cohesive force do not work, they slide. Therefore, it is a function of that angle of rest, angle of repose, which is a function of 
inherent character of the material that is their cohesive force in the general in the general 35 degree we take thumb rule like any slope which has gradient more than 35 degree are unsafe depends on nature of the material please remember if the angle is less than 35 degree they are safe i give you one more example if this is the shop side you have seen the ac sheet or something sheet they have lean to the wall and with a higher angle whereas often if you keep a at a low angle sorry i repeat like this if i keep it at a low angle this material can slide you see in the previous example i have said steeper angle is unsafe and here i say steeper angle is safe gentler angle is unsafe if i if i keep the sheet at steeper angle to the wall leaning toward the wall it is safe if i keep them at a gentler angle the sheet slides it is depending on the nature of the material thus it is inherent character of the material so we tend try to generalize if a loose materials if their angle is less than 35 degree they are safe more than 35 degree that is unsafe often even the structure steeper is also safe whereas a gentler one is unsafe that is a hard structure this is a loose material influence of associated water water act as a lubricant water works in a several way one is it directly increases the weight of the material higher the weight more the gravitational force or pull therefore under the influence of gravity they slide water tends to increase the weight of the material water can lubricate therefore reduce the cohesive force facilitate sliding continuous availability of water can cause a kind of weathering where clay like materials are produced clay has a special property in the absence of water it is shrink in presence of water it swells swelling pressure it exerts pressure and make the material to move apart so water present may help in generation production of such mineral for a longer period if water is present clay like materials are produced this clay like material has a special property of shrinking and swelling and under the influence of under saturated condition it can act that is just now we have said plastic flow like they can escape and cause there are such several minerals sensitive for this water also cause differential erosion i have shown just now where especially along the coast the waves can erode the bottom part unsupported part part can slide thus water helps landslides and favor in a several way therefore people call water is a cross to prevent this drainage is 
cure. We will discuss how exactly drainage can help. Remember, water is a cause. Removal of water is a cure for the landslides. Influence of lithology, specific rock types also add, trigger, facilitate landslides. Rocks rich in clay, how clay can function, I have said. Mica is also another mineral by virtue of its structure can swell, can absorb a lot of water. Calcite, it is a soft mineral, has cleavage. Under the normal pressure also it can be broken and become weak. Gypsum is also another mineral like that. So, in addition to this, there are certain rocks rich in minerals like serpentine, which has a slippery nature, tongue, which has a slippery nature. These are commonly found in some kind of metamorphic rocks. If such rocks are present, light lights are likely. Influence of geological structures, bedding plane, joints and faults. This is another. If we have a horizontal rocks, their tendency to slide is a minimum. If I have a valley, river, if rocks are gentle slope, then there is a possibility of sliding, means inclined beds. On the other hand, if I have a steeper rocks on the valley sides, then, if this is a valley, these are the bedding planes. They have steeper angle. Just now I said they are stable relatively. Thus, influence of inclination of the rock, we call dip, is another important factor deciding if bedding planes are horizontal, stable. If bedding planes are inclined, depending on degree of inclination, safe or unsafe. Gentler, unsafe, stiffer, safe. If rocks are joints, jointed, the case becomes very severe. And faults also. Yesterday, Sorry, in my previous lecture, I have mentioned that along, this is the Nagzari powerhouse. Sorry, this is the Sykes point. This is the Nagzari powerhouse. From here to here, we have to take the water through tunnel for generation. This is the hill slope. All along the hill slope, rocks are highly jointed here. I give a yes. I give a better picture of this. If I this is the hill slope. Rocks are highly jointed in a different direction. This is the Sykes point, this is Nagjari powerhouse. In between all along the hill slope, rocks are highly jointed. It is a heavy rainfall area than Delhi. Water percolates, lubricates the contact, and this is a joint, this is a joint cracks. Water percolates tend to lubricate and tend to slide them. So, sliding is common especially in the hilly area due to joints. Faults also a longer faults and joints one and the same, but in terms of dimension they are different. Joints may maximum 100 meter say and depth of joints are also few meter. If there is a fault, it can be kilometers together length, it can be several hundred meters in depth. Therefore, faults are more severe than the joints. Influence of human activity also cause we cut the roadside hill slope haphazardly. 
rails, nearby slopes, they cause vibration passage of train, loose material tend to slide. These are some of the causes. Quiring is another. For quiring, we blast. There are different methods of blasting. We call controlled blasting. What is that controlled blasting? I have a tunnel to be carved. This is the tunnel to be carved if this is a hill slope. My interest is only weaken this much of rock so that I can remove them. I have to blast it that depending on my interest only 1 meter diameter, 2 meter diameter of the rock to be shattered, fractured. This we call control blasting. But in case of quarrying, there is nothing like we have to quarry the material for supply for rock to the industry for aggregates or blocks or foundation etc. We, we haphazardly quarry and haphazardly blast. Blasting for such a quarry irregularly creates joints, cracks and shatter the rocks that can become a weak point. Therefore, quarrying operation for such activities also create unfavorable structure, weakness and subsequently there is a sliding. This is already we have said, volcanoes already we have said, tsunami also just now we have said, cloud busting, continuous rain, generally September 15th onwards rain reduces in 2009 at Karwar, three days so heavy rain happened, generally in October we do not get a rain, especially along the west coast. Because of cloud bursting, so heavy rain continuously for three days, some 24 centimeter like that, that has caused severe landslides there. Anthropogenic activities like tunneling, blasting, just now we have said, add to create weakness and facilitate and favor landslides. Now, there are some minerals we have to take care where exactly we are operating our activities. Rocks which are rich in clay, especially the Mount Molnet bentonite which have large swelling capacity. We classify the soil minerals in light, kaolinite, gibbsite, Mount Morinite, etc. Depending on the structure and composition. Mount Morinite is the highest swelling, Gibbsite is the least swelling and in between we have Kaolin, Elite, etc. These minerals by virtue of their structure, they have large swelling capacity in presence of water, large shrinkage in the absence of water. And there we have a lot of risk involved. And such minerals, if present, they can create a situation where landslide become easy. Because these minerals, especially mica, calcite, gypsum, are prone to weathering. We discuss weathering shortly, little later. Weathering is a process which has to weaken the existing rock, alter their properties and these minerals are sensitive for weathering process. They get easily altered and they become much more weak during weathering. Geological structure just now I have mentioned, human influence undercutting along the hill slope, we have mentioned railroad, all these especially mining, deforestation is the another cause which can help accelerated erosion and landslides. Most common is the vibration resulted due to earthquake. This we repeatedly mention and stress some of the major earthquakes that have caused 
landslides. We have also recorded a awesome earthquake even at many places. Yes. Just now I have mentioned the deforestation. Observe, I draw your attention, is a dark green. Friends, we have a satellite image and once I process the satellite image, I can get many pictures, more details about the land and causes. We will continue how best we can make use of the satellite image. Friends, uh, we will continue. So far we have discussed the various causes, uh, natural, geological factors, earthquake. Now we will try to appreciate how man-made activities also trigger the landslides. Thank you.